Good morning, LCH family. Thank you so much for tuning in again on another Sunday for our online worship experience. We're so excited and so grateful you decided to visit us. Listen, we're excited for the word of the Lord. We're excited to eat again from the word of the Lord. So I dare you to get up on your feet and join me in a moment of worship. Father God, we thank you so much. God, we thank you for being sovereign. God, we thank you for being holy. We thank you for being El Shaddai. God, we thank you for being Abba, Father. Father, we thank you for being our defender, Jehovah Gabor, Father. We thank you for being uh, Jehovah Rapha, Father. We thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. All of these things you've been to us, Father, and we are grateful. We are grateful to be entering into a period of exodus, Father, where we are escaping the things that have had us bound, Father. We are grateful to be exiting from that and entering into your presence, Father. We are excited to dive deeper into your word today, Father. We are excited to be free. I I. I dare you to decree that right now. We are excited to be free. I am excited to be free, Father, and we just thank you for freedom that we're experiencing time and time and time again, Father. We will no longer be bound to those things that had us away from you, away from your presence, Father, away from calling you Abba, Father. We are excited to walk into this newness. We're excited to walk into this new life that you have prepared for us. Us, Father, we are transitioning our hearts, transitioning our minds, Father, and we are placing, replacing them with the mind of Christ, with the heart of Christ, Father, and we thank you right now. I dare you to give God some praise for the freedom that we are experiencing. Listen, this service is going to be crazy. It was crazy last week, crazy the week before that. It is going to be so much deeper, and we are ready. I hope you're ready because I know I am Listen, you are able to give at any time during this service with the giving information on the screen, and we're going to have it after service as well. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere, and I hope you are empowered. Good morning, Lord Church of the Harvest. So good to be with y'all today. I hope you guys are ready to worship. I hope you're ready to have an encounter with God. Can we just lift our voice and just give Jesus a great big shout of praise? Hallelujah. 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 Come on, open that mouth. Hallelujah. Lift that voice. Give Jesus a shout. Come on, lift your voice like a trumpet. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, turn your hallelujah into I adore you, I adore you, I adore you. We adore him today. He is the object of our affection. He is the desire of the nation, to according to prophet Haggai. He is the desire of the nation. He's not just the desire of the nations, but he is my desire. Come on, point your hands to heaven and say, Lord, you are my desire. You are my desire every other desire is crucified every other desire is abased in your presence you are my desire you are my desire just a very simple song and we're going to go to the word my heart you know it my mind my soul belongs to you you know it you paid the price for me Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. You know it, that's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, just a little bit of it. My heart, my mind, say, my heart, my mind, my mind, my soul, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price, you paid the price for me way back, way back on Calvary. That's why I praise, I lift you up, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart, that's why my heart is filled with praise. So much praise, that's why my heart. That's why my heart is filled with praise. 
filled with praise. That's why my heart, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Praise him. Praise him. I know old school. Praise him. Mm. Praise him. His name is Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, from the rising of, from the rising of the sun unto the going down. Unto the going down of the same, the same. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Jesus is worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him, say, praise him. Everybody ought to praise. Worthy of it, oh, praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, Jesus, blessed Savior, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy to. Worthy to be praised, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, let's clap to him and let's praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know many of you said, oh, that was old school, Apostle. Listen, guys, I just felt those two songs um, this morning. And guess what, y'all? It's praise to our king. So we love him and we praise him. We are just so excited about being sons and daughters of the most high today, guys. I know we've been um, just talking in our Bible study on Tuesday nights about the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, we've just been looking at Christ indeed coming as a man and then uh, uh, without question revealing himself to be the son of God. And I don't mean any harm today, guys, but somebody should rejoice today that this week Jesus Christ showed himself to you in, in many different ways, manifold ways. He showed himself to be healer, provider, keeper. Anybody glad that they had a revelation of Jesus Christ to this week? Glory to God. Glory. Listen, I don't know who he revealed himself to be to you, but he revealed himself to be much to me this week. Healer, provider, uh, uh, the, the, my prince of peace my comforter my god he revealed himself to be everything that he promised he would be so we thank him for that listen i'm recording from a different place today uh lord church of the harvest guests and visitors we are in our sanctuary well not our sanctuary but we're in a space one of the many spaces in our new edifice and um, we're just live today from that place and we're just grateful that god has afforded us this opportunity to have our own space so we give him glory for that let's go into the word quickly because um I, and i'm not going to be long i know i say that every week but i'm not going to be long this week um i feel like the lord's been really feeding us um robust meals and uh fattening meals and you know we have a lot to digest so i don't want to uh give really a lot this week because i really want a, all that the holy spirit has been speaking to really settle uh, in you so that it can move to the place of application all right so i'm not going to stuff you but i do want to uh, illuminate something to you today. The Holy Spirit uh, quickened this revelation to me and I want to just share it with you and it won't take me very long. So get your pens, get your pads and get ready to write. All right. Uh, Exodus, the second chapter, Exodus chapter two, verse 11. And we've been kind of hanging out uh, with the, in the sister scripture, Hebrews eleven twenty four, 24, uh, that says when Moses grew and mature, he refused to be a son of Pharaoh's daughter. We've been hanging out there a bit and kind of leading up to what led to Moses, Moses' moment of awakening, if you will, or his moment of, uh, of contemplation or his moment of, uh, uh, or the initial moment of him making his exit from Egypt. And I want to just give another piece to this. 
purpose. And I know for sure it's going to bring so much clarity uh, to why God really wants his people free in this season. Uh, Exodus 2, it says, and it happened at that time that Moses grew up. Same thing that he, uh, Hebrews 11.24 says, actually. And it happened at the time Moses grew up and went out to his brothers and saw their burdens and saw their burdens and he saw an Egyptian man striking a Hebrew man of his brothers and he turned this way and that and saw that there was no man about and he struck down the Egyptian and buried him in the sand and he went out the next day and look two Hebrew men were brawling and he said to one in the wrong why should you strike your fellow and he said who set you as a man prince and a judge over us is it is it uh, to kill me that you mean to kill I'm sorry as you meant to, as you killed the Egyptian and Moses was afraid and he thought surely the thing had become known and Pharaoh heard of this thing and he sought to kill Moses. Uh, the latter part says, and Moses fled from Pharaoh's presence and dwelt in the land of Midian. I want to focus more so on verses 11 and verses 12 today. I've read the rest of the story so that you can really see what led up to Moses' flight or Moses' exit. I want to start by giving you these two important uh, principles out of the word of God, which actually, if, 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 if I wasn't disciplined as a preacher, we could really uh, ride off of these two points. So get your pen, get your pad, write these down. The Holy Spirit is going to bring some light to this. Watch this. I, I, I want to present this principle. Number one, the kingdom increases in us two ways. Write this in your notes. The kingdom of God increases in us two ways it increases in us two ways or th uh, uh, there are two ways that the kingdom of God increases through us and those two ways are through faith and submission I'm going to say it again through faith and submission I'll actually show you this uh, in two passages of scripture the kingdom of God increases in us through faith and and submission faith and submission so many of you um you welcome the kingdom of god in your life and you say lord be king of my life and i want your kingdom to increase in me in every aspect of my being my mind my thoughts my attitude and my soul let your kingdom increase in me i believe i taught you guys how to pray that on uh, one of our recordings let your kingdom increase in me but how does that kingdom increase let me give you these two keys again through faith and and submission through faith and submission through faith and submission which means the rule of God increases in you two ways through faith and submission I got to say that one more time the kingdom of God increases in you two ways through faith and submission so if you want the kingdom to increase in the area of your soul, the area of your attitude. If you want the kingdom of God uh, to move aggressively against uh, uh, the spaces that uh, these demonic presence once occupied, you need these two keys, faith and submission. As we discussed from last week, how does faith come? Romans tells us that faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. Romans 10, faith comes by hearing. So the more we hear, the more faith is ignited, right? Are you with me so far? Hang with me. Remember again that the kingdom of God increases through faith and submission. How does my faith increase? Through the hearing of the word of God. As I told you on last week, you going to need faith to make an exit. You are going to need faith to make an escape. You're going to need to believe every ounce of God's word against what your taskmaster is telling you, against what your history has dictated to you. You're going to need faith. And how does faith for your exit come? Through the hearing of the word of God. God. The more I hear, the more I am ready to respond. And as I respond, the kingdom of God increases in me. Are you hearing me now? I want saints of God, you to get to a place where you talk to Abba and you say, Abba, I want your kingdom to rule every aspect of my life. I don't want your kingdom just to rule on Sunday. I need your kingdom to rule from Sunday to Sunday, every day of the week, every hour. I need your kingdom. If you don't rule me, I'll want walk according to my own rules. If you don't rule me, I'll lend myself to uh, the carnal desires. I'll give myself, I need your kingdom to rule in my life. I don't want my rule
rule anymore. I want your rule. So as we welcome the increase of the kingdom in us, we do that, number one, as I said, by faith. The more you hear the word of God, the more you are strengthened to respond to that word and the kingdom increases in you. Here's the second way, through submission, through submission. The kingdom of God increases in us through submission. Remember now, most of you, I'm going to help some of you in your prayer life because a lot of you are saying, Holy Spirit, I want you to uh, 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 take charge. I want you to just... Uh, uh, take my take the take take my mind, take my hands, take my lips, and and control them. But that's not what the Holy Spirit does, guys. The Bible says Holy Spirit is a gentleman, which means He does not force Himself on anyone. Come on, y'all. He works with your will, your own volition, which means He wants you to partner with Him. And as you partner with Him, you submit to Him. So the way the kingdom increases in us is through submission. Now watch what Jesus says in Matthew uh, the 18th chapter chapter verse three, he says, unless you, uh, one translation says this, unless you change and become like a child, you will never experience the kingdom of God. That was huge. Unless you change and become like a child, you will never experience the kingdom of God. Here's what this means. That children are full of faith. Here's the two keys. Children are full of submission. Come on. Uh, the only way the kingdom is going to increase in you is you got to humble yourself to a childlike demeanor, a childlike state, having a childlike faith and a childlike submission, seeing God as the leader, seeing him as father and saying, I have faith in everything that you say. I have confidence in everything that you say. That's the childlike position. Come on. The kingdom is not going to increase in you with a know-it-all attitude. The kingdom is not going to increase in you with an arrogant posture and demeanor. Uh, Actually, the Bible says, humble yourself in the presence of God and he in due season will exalt you. That the way God elevates you, the way God increases in you is through submission and humility. Somebody should shout humility. I know that's a word we don't like. Submission is a word we don't like, but that's the only way the kingdom of God will increase in you. You can't yell for the kingdom of God to increase in you. Come on. You can't shout for the kingdom of God to increase in you. It only comes to ways through submission and through faith and you have to take on the childlike posture now if that is true about the kingdom of God remember there is a counterfeit dominion that operates based upon kingdom of light principles which means they take uh, this dominion takes the dominion of darkness rather takes kingdom of light principles and perverts those principles why because the kingdom of darkness knows that those principles actually work so if the kingdom of God in increases in us through faith and submission this also must be true about the dominion of darkness i'm going to show you this in the word of god it also must be true about the dominion of darkness the dominion of darkness increases through faith and submission now some of you say well what do you mean faith when you hear when you listen to the voices that are apart from the holy spirit and you respond to those voices that's called faith right uh temptation responded to them to the, the voices of temptation that is faith it's called carnal faith it's, it's dark faith, but it's actually faith because it produces a fruit. We'll talk about that. Uh, so uh, faith, again, faith or responding to the words that are spoken from voices apart from the Holy Spirit. That is also faith, but also submission. When I submit to the will of an agent that is not uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ's kingdom, and, and, I, and I follow through with it, and I go with it, and I allow that thing to lead me, that's called submission. So that's how the dominion of darkness increases in your life. Life. Hang with me. I'm going somewhere. Some of you want to know how is it that I started uh, in my teenage years playing with this, but all of a sudden, as a full grown adult, this thing indeed has gained power and it's gained influence. Um, it's almost like the enemy when in the garden he was a serpent. By the time we get to Revelations, he's a dragon. It's because, watch this, there's been faith towards him and there's been submission towards him. So he increases based upon our faith in him. He increases is based upon our submission to him. Are y'all hearing me today? So the dominion of darkness increases in our lives. The stronger
strongholds increase in our lives when there is faith and when there is submission. Matthew 24 tells us this. It says because of the increase of wickedness, Jesus is making a prophetic declaration about the end time, that there will be an increase of wickedness, uh, wickedness and the love of many will wax cold. Jesus tells us this, that there will be an increase of wickedness, an increase of wickedness. But watch this. We said this also in Matthew 17, verse 17, when he rebukes his disciples, he actually calls them an unbelieving, uh-oh, uh-oh, a generation that's without faith, but he also calls them a perverted generation. That's interesting, y'all, because watch this. You cannot be a people of faith and not believe God. Come on. You're either going to be a people of faith, believe in God, or you're going to be a people who uh, draws a line to say, listen, I'd rather not believe and not call myself a person of faith. But if you're going to be a person of faith, you have to believe God. And God actually says that a faithlessness or not having faith in God opens a door to perversion because when there's no faith in God, there is a twisting of what is true. There's a manipulation of what is, uh, 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 what is reality, if you will, or truth. So God says this, he says, that there will be an increase of wickedness, which will lead to, let's put this together, unbelieving, a perverse generation. That speaks again to the increase and the effects of the increase of wickedness. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So, so why are you leading us this way, apostle, this one? Because I need you to see that the text in Exodus 2 actually says Moses grew up. So here's what this means, guys. Moses was in Pharaoh's house for an extended period of time, which which means uh, there was a lot of Egypt in him when he was a child. Listen to what I'm going to say, y'all. When he was a child, he was mentored and tutored by the Egyptians, which means uh, this whole, this Egyptian hold or the spirit of Egypt had time to grow and develop. Listen to what I'm saying. So you see why there was such a conflict in Moses in this text in Exodus 2, I'm sorry, Exodus 2, because Moses is feuding or he's warring with what I know to be true about my DNA versus what I have grown up in, what I've submitted myself to all of these years. See, it would have been easy for Moses to make an escape had he not had the growing presence of Egypt on the inside of him. Uh-oh, I'm saying something. Listen, here's why most of our escapes and our deliverance is very difficult. Come on, y'all. I need to tell you, it's not going to be a smooth deliverance. It's not going to be a smooth escape. Why? Because that stronghold hold has gained influence in your life but the good news today is that at the name of Jesus come on the scripture actually says it says the stronghold can occupy a house or the strong man can occupy a house but when one who is stronger comes the strong man must submit so although that strong man is going to take some effort to dislodge him it's going to be dislodged because the greater presence Jesus Christ is coming to confront the strong man Somebody should shout glory, hallelujah right there. So watch this. So, so Moses now is dealing with, again, I taught this last week, the voice of his DNA, the voice of his breath, the voice of who he knows he is versus, guys, the indoctrination of Egypt. Because watch it, he's been in Egypt for a long time. Scholars say that he left Egypt actually at the age of 40. So he was indoctrinated by uh, Egyptian philosophy and theology for over 30-something years, guys. So you can imagine, you can imagine that, that there was a stubborn strong man that did not want to let Moses go. But I, I want to show you what actually caused the story and the text to shift. Now, the Bible says that Moses, that he went to his brothers and he saw something happening. Now, I want to highlight this because I want to give you a key to deliverance and freedom that I believe the enemy does not want you to see. When Moses goes to his brother, the Bible says that he is watching. Let me break this down. He is watching watching an Egyptian. He's watching an Egyptian. An Egyptian. Remember now, the Egyptians represent the lifestyle of sin, the taskmaster, the hold of sin. He saw an Egyptian putting an increased burden on one of his Hebrew brothers. And the Bible declares that this Egyptian actually was striking this Hebrew. Now, y'all, I, I know. 
now, now watch this. Moses, y'all, I, I, some of y'all see it already. Moses is an Egyptian, right? Uh, so he really shouldn't have a problem with the Egyptian striking his brother, but something happened in Moses. I believe this is something the Holy Spirit revealed to me through reading the text. I believe that Moses actually saw his future in the Egyptian that was striking his brother. Hang with me. I'm going to prove my point to you. He saw his future in the Egyptian that was striking his brother. Let me show you what first J what James actually says. James 1 verse 14. Watch this. I'm going to show you James 1 verse. Actually, let's start with 13. It says, uh, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God, for God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil, and he himself tempts no one. Verse 14, but every person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed and uh, abated by his own evil desires, lusts, and passions. Verse 15, now watch this, watch this. I'm going to connect these dots. Uh, it says, then evil desire when it is conceived. It Watch it now, conception conception when an evil desire is conceived it gives birth to sin i'm gonna say it again when an evil desire is conceived it gives birth to sin we're looking at stages of growth y'all it gives birth to sin and when it is fully matured okay so there is a birthing of sin and there's a maturing of sin Uh oh but when sin is at its maturity and when it's fully grown it leads to death uh-huh so so watch this y'all this, this this it starts first with watch it be us being tempted then it starts first then it moves to us uh, uh, yielding to the temptation verse 15 it says then the evil desire when it is conceived conception it gives birth to sin so we see temptation we see conception we see birth of sin and then we see the maturity which is death remember I told you that one of the reasons I believe through reading this text uh, Moses uh, uh, had a, 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 a moment or an awakening is that he saw himself in the Egyptian that was striking his brother. Watch this y'all. See Moses, although he grew up in Pharaoh's house, he had not come to the place uh, where he was enforcing harsh treatment on the Hebrews. But just because he was not at that place yet does not mean that the seed was not in him. I'm going to say it again. Just because he wasn't at that place yet does not mean that the seed was not in him. Oh y'all, watch this, watch this. Many of us right now there are certain seeds and proclivities and habits that are small they're in the conception stage they're in the sin stage but watch this God to arrest your conscience to arrest your attention will give you a glimpse of what the end will look like if this seed in you continues to grow Lord when I looked at this, the Holy Spirit said, he said, my people don't understand the gravity and the weight and the power of the seed that's placed in them. Can I tell you that the seed of perversion may start with something so innocent as looking at dirty magazines or petting or a peeping. It'll start innocent, but then it'll move into masturbation. I know I'm going far now. Then it moves into fornication. And then after fornication, it moves into adultery. And then it'll move from adultery to homosexuality. And then you move from homosexuality to pedophilia. I know y'all not ready for this. Then we'll go into bestiality. See, see, watch this. It's the same seed, but different manifestations. And I'm here to tell you. The Holy Ghost is coming after today. The seed and what has been conceived and what has been given birth to. Why? Because he does not want the story to end bad for you like it's ended for others. God does not want this thing to grow in you. I know. See, here's the thing. We're so quick to judge more. Uh, uh, well, well, let me say it right. We're so quick to judge uh, the growth of the same seed that's in us in other people, which means just because that person is manifesting the seed differently does not believe it does not it does not mean that it's not the same seed that's on the inside of you let me try that one more time just because the person is manifesting the same seed different does not mean it's not the same seed that's on the inside of you okay for one person, greed could be food. That's right. The spirit of greed manifests into gluttony. Come on. It manifests into lack of self-control. For one person, it's food. For another person, it's money. But it's the same seed. Oh, y'all. 
It's the same seed. It's the same seed. And the Lord says to save your life today. I want to show you what could potentially happen if you don't make your escape. Oh, so Matt, he'll cause me to drive down the street and see the man slumped over after getting high and taking a hit to show me that the same spirit of addiction that's on him is the same spirit of addiction that's on you. It's just his drug of choice is cocaine and your drug of choice is food, but it's the same spirit. I know, I know. I'm gonna get I'm getting in trouble this morning. It's the same spirit. And one of the things that God wants you to know this morning is, is that the reason why I am pressing this message of deliverance in you, because I don't want your life to end up in the place where you've seen other individuals life end. Come on, their life ended in suicide. Their life ended in torment. Come on. But your story does not have to be that way. God is setting before you an opportunity right now to make an escape. I'm sorry. Listen, saints of God. Listen, listen, listen. There are two things that I believe God shows us. I believe he shows us his perfect will for our lives. And then he shall show us uh, the plan of the enemy for our lives. And then he gives us the opportunity to choose which one we actually want. And once you catch a glimpse of what the enemy actually planned for you, Lord, I feel the anointing, man. When you catch a glimpse, y'all was tired when I started this message. I feel strength now. When you catch a glimpse, see, here's the thing. Some of you on this call or this live today, you actually caught a glimpse. Come on. It wasn't even so much that you were captivated by God's perfect will. You saw what the enemy played or planned for you. And you said, no, 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 no. That was won't be my end not when I have the option of freedom and escape it doesn't have to end in death for you it doesn't have to end that way for you listen you actually have a choice today you you can choose life or you can choose death and and, and I believe saints of God I believe that when I choose life it brings me to a place where of submission is right where I started where I say God I, I, I submit to your perfect will for my life I, I, I don't want the one that the enemy has carved out please don't be deceived please don't be deceived the enemy has studied you and he actually has an end goal for you and that's why y'all he's already put the right people in your life he put the y'all the tool of temptation right before you he has set it up for your story to end in demise but now I know Lord Jesus now I know and sometimes that knowing comes by seeing what your future could be even if it's revealed through other people that could be me that could be me that that's what the enemy desires my end to be Oh, saints of God. I'm almost done. I'm pretty much done. But, but I, I, I want to nail this in. I want to nail this in. Uh, Moses had a glimpse. I believe. I believe he had a glimpse. He, he saw what he could be. He could be a persecutor of his brethren. Actually, to, to be contextually accurate, 11, Hebrews 11, 24 actually says it. it. It says he chose. Come on. He chose to be, to suffer the affliction of being a Hebrew rather than enjoy the pleasures of being an Egyptian. Lord Jesus. Meaning, meaning Moses saw what his future could be and he didn't want it. He didn't want it. He made a choice. Y'all, listen, listen. Listen, I, I know, I know it's a song and it's a cliche about us seeing ourselves in the future. But actually, I, my, my prayer this week is that the Lord uh, uh, causes your eyes to be open so you, could, you can see the future of not just God's prophetic plan for you, but also what the enemy has planned for you. And I'm going to tell you, you ain't got to look far. 
God will put he'll put a person right in your midst and this is why we got to be careful how we judge people we got to be careful how we judge people who sin different than we do I know I'm getting in trouble y'all because while pedophilia may be their manifestation of a perverted seed uh huh masturbation could be your manifestation of a perverted seed okay uh, while, while, while spells and enchantments are the manifestation of someone who is indulging in uh, 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 f uh, 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 working with familiar spirits or what we call witchcraft, uh, um, yours in small seed form is manipulation. Oh, see, it's the same seed. It's just a different manifestation. So before you start consulting stars and crystals, God and putting chants and spells on people and stabbing dolls and stuff. I know. See, see, y'all think that's extreme. See, but that's when it's mature and grown. But it's the same seed that's in the person who is manipulative, who, who has a habit of lying and deceiving people. It's the same seed. But God wants to uproot it. But again, Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He, he he's, oh, here we go. Deuteronomy, before I set before you, behold, I set before you life and death. Uh, curse and blessings. Which one are you going to choose? I know this, this is probably, this is a quick sobering word today. I mean, sobering because right now the enemy is showing you that it's all good. You know, you, you let, 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 let me make the devil out of a liar. Listen, guys, my life has been hit by so much warfare since I started this deliverance teaching series and I might as well go all, all the way. Here's what the enemy wants you to think. I'm exposing something now. He wants you to think that it's innocent. It's just a pet thing that you can control, Lord. Oh, but, but, but the more you feed it, the more you submit to it, the more that thing begins to grow in strength and power. And, and, and eventually you get to a place where you feel like I can't control this anymore. In one season, I could control it. I could manage it. But now it seems like this thing is controlling me. But the hope is that he came to set the captive free. My question is, are you willing to allow the kingdom of God to increase in you? You're going to have to come as a child, bearing it all, exposing it all, not hiding and concealing it. Yes, mama, I was caught. Dad, I was caught with my hand in the cookie jar. Yes, it was me. I'm not hiding this. I'm not making light of this. I'm bearing it all because at the end of the day, the way your kingdom increases in my life is through submission so I submit myself to you to shut off the roads that lead to death James says it temptation then once the evil desire is conceived once there's a plan that's what that word, that word actually means plan because listen <laughs> every sin starts with a plan I know y'all y'all ain't come for this this morning it starts with a plan you there's a plan a working in your mind uh, but after there is sin then what's next once it's mature maturity speaks of growth feeding you're feeding that dragon once it grows then it leads to death. I'm closing. There was an article about a young girl whose father collected reptiles and serpents and um, more so exotic serpents or reptiles. And he brought his daughter a Burmese python. And the Burmese python was fed well. And as it was being fed well, it began to increase in size. Guys, if you don't think about Burmese pythons, they're one of the biggest snakes. I only know because I used to study snakes. <laughs> but this Burmese python began to increase in size and the, the little girl would sleep with the python and the python would increase in size and it would, it would wrap itself around the girl and she would sleep comfortably and the python was no threat. But once the python grew, to the point where it was over 300, 300 pounds, I believe. It stopped eating. And the father of the serpent took the serpent to the doctor, the vet, to, to figure out why it was that the python was not 
eating. And the vet, knowing the nature of reptiles, especially constrictors, said, I have some questions for you. Where does the snake sleep? And the father began to say, well, the serpent sleep, the snakes, the snake sleeps with my daughter. And the vet looked at the father alarmed, said, are you serious? Yeah. The, the vet said, sir, I can tell you what's wrong with the serpent. But I have one more question. How does the serpent sleep with your daughter? Well, he started off by laying next to her, stretching out. Listen. But as he began to grow in size, he began to uh, almost circle around her. The vet said to the uh, father, well, sir, here's what you didn't know. Is that the reason why that snake that you fed stopped eating is because it was sizing your daughter up. Because your daughter became the snack of his choice. I, I, I told that story and I can imagine the father was just. Uh, uh, just beside himself to know that this serpent which I fed was actually sizing my daughter up to devour her I'm here to tell you I know whatever your pet thing was it was small but the more you feed it the more it gains strength and at the end its desire is to devour you James calls it death but God gives you glimpses of your future. And at Hebrews 24, you, you have a choice now. Do I want to continue as a son of, of Pharaoh's house or do I want to take an L? <laughs> or take the low road or be like the Hebrews. For Moses saw what his future could be. He saw what his future could be. I could be the Egyptian that afflicts the Hebrews. But that's not how this story is supposed to end for me. There's something in me that says, back to last week's lesson, there's more. And I'm here to tell you, saints of God, the book has not been written yet. There are more chapters, and I believe you're about to turn the page. And God's about to show you that in this chapter, in this chapter, there's freedom. In this chapter, there's deliverance. But you have to make a choice today. Do I want to accept the path the enemy has for me, which will lead to death. Please do, don't, don't be deceived. The more this thing grows, the more you lose control. Hear me. The more you lose, and especially for those of us who just think nobody sees and I'm just getting away with it. What you don't know is you are feeding something that one day will develop an appetite and a desire to devour you. For your enemy, Satan, Wanders to and fro. Actually calls him a lion. Like a lion. Seeking whom he may devour. But God has set before you life and death. Choose life today. Father in the name of Jesus. You set this table before us this morning. For us to choose. Do we want the increase of your kingdom? Or do we want the increase of the dominion of darkness? God, it's not going to take long for us to arrive to a choice today because I, Holy Spirit, you've already been working on that person that tuned in today. You've already started working. You start showing them what this could be in the end. You showed them two things. You showed them what it will look like if they stay bound. But also you showed them what this thing will look like if they choose freedom. I pray, brothers and sisters, that you choose freedom. Holy Spirit, thank you for revealing the truth, for loving us enough this morning to tell us the truth. It's not a pet. It's not a pet. It's a spirit that once it's fully mature in your life, it wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But thank you, Father, through submission, your kingdom will increase in us. Through faith, your kingdom will increase in us. And we give you thanks and praise. Listen, if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ today, if you haven't made him your Lord and Savior, it's very simple. Jesus, I choose you. You are the way, the truth, and the light. You, you, you even told us, listen, let me tell you what Jesus told his disciples. He says, listen, my teachings are easy. My way is easy. That's what he said. My burdens are light. You've been serving a 
harsh taskmaster all these years who wants to end your life. He wants to destroy you, tear you apart. But Jesus says, my way is not like that. I, 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 I did not die for you to remain in bondage. I died so you can be free. Oh, my brother and sister, choose Jesus today. There's a number at the bottom of your screen. Elder Brandon Bennett is waiting. Your story does not have to end like others. It can end in victory. It can end in Jesus. It can end in triumph. Accept him today as your Lord and Savior. Today is the day, the hour, the moment. Jesus, come into my life. I turn from my sins. I want you to create in me a clean heart. And I want your heart. I want your desire for my life. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for getting up from the dead, defeating death and every enemy I will face. I am now saved. I join your kingdom today. Be my king and my Lord forever. Call that number right now and make that choice today. For those of you who have given your life to Jesus already, listen, listen, I'm sorry. God only had to show me my end once. Mm. How it could turn out once. Come on. And for many of you, you got that same testimony. I'm telling you, th 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 there's such a pricking of the spirit this morning. Some of you got that same testimony. He actually showed you how this could end. For some of you, he showed you in a mental hospital. Come on. He, he showed you out of your mind. He showed you in the grave. He showed you premature death. But it does not have to end like that. Believer, it does not have to end like that. I choose life. I choose life. I pray you choose life today. Remember, Jesus has a different story for you. The master has a different plan for you. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Choose him. And this is not just for those who aren't believers, but for the believer. Choose him. Choose the path he has for you. And there you'll find freedom. God bless you. See you. Hey, guys. On behalf of LCH's Go to the World Evangelism Team, we want to invite you to join in our Target One campaign. What is Target One? So glad you asked. If you're a believer and a follower of Christ, you have already been commissioned to make disciples. So look, we are encouraging you to commit to at least one. How does this look? First step is start with consecrating your life to God. The Bible tells us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Two, pray for that one lost soul. Remember that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. So this is exactly what we have to do. Number three, let's co-label with Christ. Remember, this is our responsibility to work alongside God to bring these lost souls in. Last but not least, create a disciple. Look, we're not looking to just create converts, but we're looking to create students of God's word. And guess what? We believe that you have what it takes because the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. So let's all do our part and look forward to hearing from our Father. Y'all well done.